Thanks for joining us on episode 1,481 of the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. I'm Alona LaPari. I challenge you to invest in yourself, invest in others, develop your influence, and impact the world by using your time, your talent, and your treasures to live out your calling. Having the ability to find the path of your intuition is key. And one way to be inspired to do that is to listen to this. The Inspired Stewardship Podcast with my friend, Scott Matter. Spiritual people like to me, years ago, I judged that to me it's like, well, they don't achieve. And my main motivation was achievement. I had to be the achiever. So to me, if I was in the being, how was I gonna get all the achievement done? So there was always like this conflict for me. Welcome and thank you for joining us on the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. If you truly desire to become the person who God wants you to be, then you must learn to use your time, your talent, and your treasures for your true calling. In the Inspired Stewardship Podcast, you will learn to invest in yourself, invest in others, and develop your influence so that you can impact the world. In today's podcast episode, I interview Alona LaFree. I ask Alona about her journey to discovering her role as a coach. And I also ask Alona what it means to have a purpose-driven business and life. And Alona also shares with you what it takes to be a purpose-driven leader. I've got a new book coming out called Inspired Living, Assembling the Puzzle of Your Call by Mastering Your Time, Your Talent, and Your Treasures. You can find out more about it and sign up for getting more information over at inspiredstewardship.com, Inspired Living. That's inspiredstewardship.com, Inspired Living. Alona is the visionary CEO of The Life School, a speaker, a best-selling author to numerous books, and she shows and speaks event organizer to an audience of over 30,000 heart-driven service-based entrepreneurs and corporations. She is both a servant community builder and a people connector. She is a prior Fortune 500 CEO, also featured in Disrupt, New York Weekly, Business Insider, CEO Weekly, The Business News and Famous Times, and now she is the CEO of The Life School, where she helps visionary leaders and CEOs grow their legacy of a purpose-driven business through inner alignment, branding, marketing, sales, and team so that they can maximize their impact and income and do more good in the world. Welcome to the show, Alona. Thank you so much, Scott. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I talked a little bit in the intro about some of the stuff that you're doing now and some of the books you've written. But at the same time, I always know that intros don't really include the whole journey or the whole story of what gets you to the point where you're at today. And I like to highlight that for the listeners. So can you share a little bit more about your journey and how did you get to where you're now running uh, the life school, doing the work you do and, and working with the folks that you work with? Yeah, thanks for asking. I think I believe in everyone's journey. We all have these catalyst moments, which obviously when we go through them, we just feel like they're just obviously part of our journey and it could be challenges. I found the challenges actually the biggest catalyst for where we are and where we feel like we need to be as far as journeys concerned and phases. So I'll start with my original uh, story. I'm originally from Albania. I moved to the U.S., specifically New York, when I was 15 with my parents. So early on, I saw struggle, how it is starting over in a new country. I felt like I was at the perfect age to even start to become an adult. So I grew up very fast. I was the oldest child, and I was contributing and doing like every stuff, like reg- registering my siblings to school and like getting a job and things like that. So um, very early on, my dad, especially because he always felt the American, the, the, like America somehow always called him. Uh, he's the one that did the paperwork and all of that. And it's how we got here. He, and he just projected very early on that I, we, all three of us, me and my siblings have to get the American dream and go after the American dream and chase that because it was one of the most important things. And we could be anything that we 
wanted to be because those opportunities were not available where we came from. So I took that for what it was and I just started my journey with getting my bachelor's first for business management and finance. Very early on, I have a strong intuitive sense for business and that I had a strong business mind, which was very odd because I was only, what, like 17 at that time when I started college. But I paid attention to classes that I loved and I was attracted to lots of marketing, business, psychology, philosophy, things like that, things that I do today and I'm passionate about. And then I climbed the corporate ladder, got my first job, company was growing, Fortune 500 company, big company. They had, I was at the wrong, right uh, moment, right time. I did many roles. I was very entrepreneurial. I didn't know that at the time. I just thought that everybody just does a good job <laughs> and uh, adds value. And I just always went beyond the pay because to me, it was like, I loved what I was doing. So I did marketing for them, sales. I did HR for many years, moved all the way to the C-suite level only to find out that the American dream alongside way before I shared that, I also had met my husband, grown a little family and my two kids. We bought our home. We were settled. We had the base happening. And when I reached the top, I got like a sort of a dis- like despair, almost like <laughs> there all there is. I'm like, right. I'm supposed to be feeling this. I thought that this was... Sort of- I've made it. I should be... <laughs> I should feel better than this, right? <laughs> yeah. And I got there and I'm like, huh, like this is the front. <laughs> And meanwhile, everything just started to connect and the company was bought by another company. I no longer felt like I belong where I was and Mm. uh, some inner conflict with my marriage, some inner conflict with my values. Like sometimes everything just like connects and it all goes to where it can go like on the other end. Mm -hmm. And that's where entrepreneurship showed up for me, honestly. Never thought I'd be one. And uh, yeah, uh, I just always knew that I didn't want to go to the old journey, which was like nine to five, work for another company, do the same. That to me felt like, oh, I already was over that phase. So that's where I I just, the light, I felt the light of entrepreneurship and I started to consume a lot of information and how I was supposed to position myself and how I could begin. And that's how I began to build my business. So a couple of things I want to dive into a little bit there is one, you mentioned you had an entrepreneurial spirit in terms of how you approach your, your quote day job, you were working and doing all of that, but you, that you didn't really recognize that's what it was. And then here at the end, you were talking about that was that feeling of, oh, wait, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. What was there something in particular that you read or that you heard or that somebody shared with you that made you realize, oh, wait, this stuff I've been doing over here is proof that or gives me that feeling that I could go do this other thing on my own? Yeah, I love the question because I always had an inner knowing around business and business was my field. It was my gem. It was like where I wanted to play. It was my thing. I was very good at it. Leadership also was very strong for me. One of the top things that I did there was build teams, high performance, build talent, all all those things that it always connected me to people and people has always showed up for me everywhere. Like I like to help people, like to be with people. I like people. <laughs> I'm a high introvert. So obviously I have my moments, but I've always wanted to, I always love to grow as a person. So even when I worked in HR, I implemented so many personal development <laughs> programs, which at that time they were like, how is this connecting to job performance and the results of the KPIs and the PNLs and I just seen it early on. I'm like, there's such a high correlation between the personal stuff and the the your performance at work, the professional side. So that like inner knowing, honestly, I just like always knew. I don't know how I knew it. I just always knew it. I just felt it everywhere. And every time I would listen to things, I would business would attract me. I always wanted to know, okay, how do they build this? <laughs> there's a podcast about that. How did people build this? Like I was always mm-hmm. interested in journeys of like uh, entrepreneurs. Like how do they begin? What were the challenges? Like how, what is this? What are the phases? There's got to be patterns. Like I've always been like that kind of crazy student. And something else that was a really important uh, piece for me was an inner voice. I had, I heard my own voice telling me I was meant for something bigger and he always directed me to entrepreneurship and leadership. Mm -hmm. So that was one that took time for me to clarify because at the beginning, I'm like, okay, everybody hears voices like that. What what is this? I did not know how to listen. But the thing about our inner intuition is that it never leaves me. 
It never left me. It just kept mm-hmm. haunting me. Like every time I want to push it away and distract myself with other things, because I'm like, I'm logical. Like I got to pay my bills. I got to work under that operate operating mode. It would just come back and it would just be there. So finally I said, okay, I'm paying attention and I'm going to take the next steps, even though they're very scary for me at the time to pretty much transition everything that I knew was how the world worked mm-hmm. pretty much, which was very small now that I think about it. Well, yeah. <laughs> and it, the picture that you have today is still probably small in its own way in that it's always, I don't know, Einstein, I think, had the famous quote that the more you learn, the more that you see that you don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, the Dunning-Kruger effect, right? You know, if you don't know very much, you think you know a lot. But when you learn more, you're like, I know nothing. <laughs> you know? God, I heard another quote from Socrates. I know one thing that I don't know anything. And right. that like always like I'm like, whoo, that connects with me. Yeah. I know one thing that I don't know anything. So yeah, that's like relating to what you said. But yeah. once you see it, you can unsee it. That's the other good part. Right. <laughs> <Keeps you home. laughs> so you mentioned a couple of times having a, an intuitive sense, uh, uh, an inner an inner voice or inner guide. I talk a lot to people about hearing their calling, hearing the direction they're supposed to go, learning to to have some of that and be able to lean into it, whether it's a a particular faith walk or a particular spiritual journey that people are on, different people. I always laugh and say people call it different things, but the concept is still the same. So when you talk a little bit about your your spiritual journey and what you've gone through, talk, talk to us a little bit about how that has intersected with and guided this journey, and then how it's also developed from the journey that you've been on, if that makes sense, that that feedback between them. Thank you, because now I'm on a mission to connect the material to the spiritual. And I feel like I've really gone through my own journey of that as well. But I think one of the things that I always did really subconsciously or unconsciously, I should say, while not even being aware, was vision. I was always a visionary. I always saw before things were seen. And a lot of the things that I have implemented or I have in my life, I've always seen them. And that's not how they were going to happen. So having that insight out of that unawareness, I always got very interested around opening up my awareness, like removing my blocks, healing my trauma. Like the more I got into it, the more I'm like, oh my God, there's more. There's always more. So I just got addicted to inner work. And then I just went on and got my master's in neuroscience and just got trained in so many modalities that would help myself and others around me to just unblock their potential pretty much, unblock a lot of the things that we hold that kind of blocks us from our purpose so that we can go back to the core. And I always resonate to the oak with the oak tree because my name is actually originally, like the origin of my name is actually oak tree. Mm. So I was like strong with my base, but then there's always like the leaves around and the stronger the root, the higher the tree, the higher the light. Now I know it in spiritual lingo, lingo. Mm-hmm. We got some new lingo now, which I'm learning myself. But it all comes very naturally. So through my journey, I always felt like there was more. It couldn't just be like the logical, the masculine, okay, you got to do, be the chief high achiever that's been a, my journey to heal a lot of overachieving due to not feeling good enough. That's like my main method of madness and he a lot of money trauma so I'm like okay there's got to be more like there's got to be flow energy like it's got to be an easy way to do these things so that's where I learned more and I became very very intentional as a human I'm like okay so it's not about working hard it's about working smart but wait there's so many more concepts that I don't know so I just implemented practices in my day-to-day which are very practical I meditate tree walking like walking in nature I love the ocean so I'll go like this visit and meditate there. I'll do my gym. Like I love weightlifting because it's the strength that I get attracted to. I like just activities that I really enjoyed. And eventually these just became my, the spaces that I created so that I can go in and explore some of the inner world stuff, which I always knew were inside of me. But obviously I didn't always know. I just thought the stuff was just, again, woo, like most people, like when you don't understand something, that's another saying, we judge it, right? I'm like, Mm -hmm. It's spiritual people to me, years ago, I judged, right? Because to me, they don't achieve, right? And my main motivation was achievement. I had to be the achiever. So to me, if I was in the being, how was I going to get all the achievement done? (laughs) 
So there was always like this conflict for me. But then eventually, the more I learned, the more I'm like, oh, I can actually tap into both. Oh, that's very smart. And the more my awareness opened, the more my visions expanded, and the more I could take inspired action and just be really aligned with sort of the things that I felt were natural uh, to me or authentic to me. And I just never stop. I'm just always on that journey. And the more that I, obviously, the more you learn, the more you know when you're not really in, in good harmony with that. And I just pay attention to that now more closely. But when I started, I was sleeping, I called myself, like I was sleepwalking because I thought I knew. <laughs> but and every day I'm probably sleeping in so many other areas. So that's actually what catalyst my, my physical, my uh, awakening, which happened to be only one month. And it's been like, a, it's been like <laughs> fast. Uh, so I, I'm also like now trying to re, recalibrate my new insights and energies and healing work that's coming up. <laughs> so yeah, that's been my journey. So when you talk a little bit too of, I'm hearing a couple of different things. So you mentioned that back when you were in the corporate world, developing leaders, you started seeing that connection between you know, the personal side and the business side. And now you're talking about that kind of, we can't just treat it like it's the bottom line. It's all about business. People don't matter, that kind of thing, as well as the more intuitive or flow side of not just being. When you work with people, how do you help them understand what it means to be purpose-driven? And how does that look different for the folks that you work with before versus after? they've been working with you. Yeah, now it's turned into my life's mission to humanize business and to put purpose first and profit second for companies, almost like flipped in the script just for businesses, because those are the areas I'm strongest at. So then now that's become my mission. But the way that I help my clients is I'm pretty much my biggest, highest level of service is to connect dots. I just happen to do it in business and leadership. Those are my strengths in speaking because those are the channels that obviously I'm naturally good at, or I've also developed over the years. So when it comes to my clients, I'm pretty much the umbrella, right? I'm the dot connector for them. So when they have their goals for business, their purposes for what they want to do and achieve and all of that, or even personal life stuff, their health, their relationships, their energy, their wealth, I never saw things as one thing. I've always been, which I struggled with niching <laughs> always for the longest, because to me, it's like, I see the human. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know why I have to just position myself in one thing. I wasn't I mean I now do it at a high level with as far as like businesses and I walk them through the stages, but that's always been a struggle for me because I always saw like everything connecting together. Like all the dots always connect. So I'm like, let me do purpose. I think that's what it is. So that's why I focus more on the purpose side and with the individual I asked intentional questions and obviously I'm a good mirror now for them because I've done a lot of that. I think if I was blocked, I wasn't obviously going to be able to see and use my intuitive senses to pick up stuff that they're saying and how they're feeling and acting. And I'm just like an observer, right? And I'm just the guide. And I just ask intentional questions back to their vision for their business, which always starts with that. My bread and butter is always business and leadership because that's the thing that always I keep coming back to really with everything else. And then we explore other areas which really combine to that. So when my goal is I always work under those pillars, business and leadership, but then if we have to, we need to align personal life stuff or like life partnerships or parenting or things like that. I already have all of that in my life as well. So it just seems like more of a beautiful complementation of our gifts and experiences. And that's the way that I that I help with business. And that's what makes me me that I can connect the bigger, most important dots for them between their life's purpose and how we need to time track now backwards so we can work backwards for, from that big vision that we have connected. So I always go back. I'm always like going in the future, coming back, in the future, coming back. It's always like my pattern. And that's the, the type of work that I always do, whether many of my years, I didn't always know that was my pattern. But <laughs> now I know that we go back and come back. We go in the future and come back to build here. So, yeah. So for you, you know, what would you define or paint us a picture of what a purpose-driven 